So I teach at Kirby Park in Ashmont, so I'm going to see if we can get our first classes from Ashmont over here. The kids absolutely loved coming up here last year and so did the teachers. And that's all they spoke about for two weeks. Wow. Was the fun that they'd had up here and when can they come back. The displays that I got here are absolutely brilliant, but there's not enough room for like to bring school children and up here that like that up here so that they can show them they're squashed in and they're trying to push each other out of the way so that they can get closer and learn more. It's amazing, we're so lucky to have a facility like this in a um, country town like Wagga. Um, we have the people with the expertise, we have the people with the training, um, and the whole community comes, becomes involved then. We have uh, the opportunity with uh, partnerships with some of the bigger museums, such as the Museum of Applied Arts and Sciences and Questacon, who would love to expand their regional programs, but we're really restricted on when we can do those programs and how many people we can have in. Ideally, we would be running most of the program up here um, in our facilities, then the students can see the objects, but we've had to do 90% off-site um, in the classroom. Um, I think if every school could have one of these partnerships, it's amazing what we can do with the kids. I wouldn't have been able to produce um, a, a project like this. There's well, amazing things from the original pioneers we still have stored here, you know, the best family who were the original settlers here. We've got artefacts from that particular family. Well, for goodness sake, that's the beginning, the middle of the 1800s. So if this collection was dispersed or destroyed or lost, all of that beginning stuff would disappear and that would be devastating, I think, to the Wagga people. We've always had problems with water coming into this area, where, whether it's coming from rising damp, flooding or from rain, so storms and also leaking from watering systems. So it used to actually come down all along here, all along this wall, and you can see the old water stains down there. We've had it coming up from below here and it, it came from all the way over there to flood here and it all pooled and you can see the water stains. But the door there, we have to have um, padding underneath the door because we get flooding coming through under that door as well. Uh, we did an assessment last year and um, we're at about 165% capacity. There's a community expectation that we will collect and preserve significant objects and so we're probably getting up to about 200% capacity which means our objects aren't being stored um, in optimal conditions and um, we're finding short-term solutions uh, for those objects with no long-term plan um, to, to be able to uh, project them into the future. Uh, the display area outside is a little bit dire. Uh, it is one of the most significant rural machinery collections in the country because of our connections to the Ag Experiment Farm uh, in Wagga Wagga and um, most of the objects that we have out there aren't protected from the elements. They're deteriorating before our eyes. Uh, we would love to be able to bring them in but also to make it safe for people to walk around and interact with those objects where um, there is a need and a, a craving for people to interact with the past but at the moment we can't facilitate that effectively because it's simply not safe.